Hello. 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 Responding to the conversation about the will. Now I see you. Now I hear you. Now I feel you inside of me. It's all here, right? It's all right here right now we don't have to look for it anywhere it's right inside the voice and the voice is such an amazing messenger isn't it and so many of us were brought up to feel not to feel it not to feel it not to really recognize that your sound your unique voice has its own unique DNA signature even the quantum scientists have measured it and it's beyond measure it's beyond measure but it is also uh, when you see your voice when you see the sound of your voice as a visual reality as well as a, an audio audible one it is quite extraordinary I was just with um, John Stuart Reed some of you know may know John Stuart Reed who is uh, one of the great quantum scientists of uh, who's one of the most humble people that I've ever met and he's like a kind of mad scientist because everything is a wonder of wonders and um, he's he's just beautiful and um, so he has a 20-year friendship uh, short uh, he has can really now demonstrate thanks to the power of water what your voice looks and sounds like and so the other day he rang me up and said can you just send me your sound in five different versions uh, so I got into the bathroom uh, into my bath actually uh, because that was the uh, most kind of echoing reverberant place to go and I just sang ah he said that'll be fine that'll be fine then I went hey E O M So we recorded all of those onto my um, mobile phone, sent them off, and so what came back were these just extraordinary mandalas of the human voice of in this case, it was my voice, uh, every single mandala that you would see. So the sound is imprinted into water, as many of us will know, and then this extraordinary visual image comes out. And John and I started uh, exploring this literally 20 years ago, and we've just come back together now. And as, um, as beloved Eli was saying, sound healing, sound healing, sound as medicine, is really becoming the medicine of the future as we know well it's actually the, it's the medicine of now it's always been our medicine it's been so inspiring to hear so many people here i loved that yesterday um laura just all the 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 talk of frequencies and colors 
and evolution through the body and then beyond the seven sounds and beyond and beyond and beyond and back again and back again and back again. And then I'm hearing Rory talking about the will and how, you know, it's something that we've got to really take, really take serious care of. And as you know, in your own body, there are three power centers. There are three will centers in the body. So I'd love us to explore that today uh, through sound as well, with you, with your sound, with your will. Uh, and that really is taking us through my will, which is the, uh, the egoic mind, the personality voice will, thy will, which is the devotional heart-centered will, where, you, where my starts realizing it's got a new job. It's got a new job, which is simply to not disappear, because otherwise, if the egoic mind disappears, uh, you literally just sit like a stone for years, uh, because you're in such bliss and such peace. You don't need to do anything. But, <laughs> and having had a glimpse of that for a few months myself, uh, you know, with a seven-year-old child that you're bringing up at that time, it's challenging. It's challenging. So bliss is a wonderful thing. And also, our job, my job, our job is to bring that bliss back down into the body. So I'm just noticing a lot of people are talking about ascending. I'm actually busy descending. <laughs> And I think in some ways, the, you know, we've got to do both, obviously. And some of us, like my daughter particularly, was really earthbound woman, you know. And I'm much more in the etheric direction. So we've uh, had this incredible lifetime. She's now 40. She's older than me. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and she's now exploring and researching how to go up higher and higher and higher. And she's taught me how to research coming down lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. And, lower. and she's a jazz musician, so she's taken the understanding into innumerable notes on the piano. Unbelievable. So here we are. Are you an ascender? Are you, are you busy ascending? Or are you a descending person? Or are you both and, both at the same time, right? It's all, it's all happening, isn't it? All at the same time. Just want to check, can you hear, can you hear me okay? A little bit up, just want to check. Is that better, is that better? Come up a little bit more, is that better? Yeah, that's, that's better. better, okay, just want to check. Because I think it was sort of going, uh, <laughs> which is perhaps a little bit how we're feeling. Okay. <laughs> so just be aware of this extraordinary field. I may have to keep doing this. Uh, this extraordinary field that we have co-created over many years and huge gratitude to Eli and his team for bringing this together. Quite extraordinary. Can we just express our gratitude to Eli and everyone? So when I came back from this bliss state in uh, India quite a few years ago now, I started noticing that the way to come back into the body was to start having conversations with yourself. So things like, you know, Now I see you Now I hear you Now I feel you Inside of me Should we just try that together? See how that lands in you. Now I see you. Let's just say that. Now I see you. So we're now addressing the will. The will. Now I hear you. Now I hear you. Now I feel you. Now I feel you. Inside of me. Inside. We're going to go through this a few times because we've been uh, we've been sitting quite a lot listening to one person do something here, and everybody's very been very beautifully, uh, you know, absorbing and cross fertilizing and all these lovely things. Um, but if you feel uh, in a minute, we're going to stand, we're going to move around a bit as well, so that we can really access this willpower uh, that's in the body. Would you like to do that? Yes. How much would you like to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Good. 
So we're going to start with quite a simple little gentle this song, like the one that we've just been singing. And just, just sing it as loud as you feel. Just imagine this might be the last day of your life. Imagine that. Uh, you know, because obviously uh, I've been working in this field for uh, what's called the Naked Voice, which is what I came back from India with. And in 1990, so 40 years, uh, going back to 1982, when I was climbing the Greenham Common fences uh, and practicing nonviolence and uh, learning about Gandhi and Mahatma Gandhi and uh, the great Martin Luther King and what nonviolence means. And then I got involved in institutional, institutional violence. And then I, then I started asking the question, why is music such a small part of the school curriculum in the state school curriculum that is and uh, so that then took me on this journey and I started really wanting to find out uh, so when my phone was finally being bugged you know because there were all this institutional violence and there were these kind of uh, newspaper articles saying you know I was only 32 right so blonde bombshell preaches indoctrination to schools and children in schools and that was just simply because we were wanting to help teachers not to be afraid of children and to learn how to communicate with each other. So that became Blonde Bombshell Preaches Indoctrination. And that was because I was, this was happening at the same time as we were funded by Roundtrees to uh, bring peace education into schools. So that was uh, regarded as communist infiltration. God bless us all. I mean, really, God bless us all. So when that happened, and I realized my phone was being bugged, I thought, right, I think it's time to go back to music. Whew. And I started just traveling to different musical cultures and exploring the indigenous relationship with the voice. I uh, went to Africa, spent seven months in Africa, uh, then went off to the Middle East, uh, Turkey, and just got completely involved in Sufism particularly the Mevlana uh, Dervish uh, world and the great Oruç Güvenç, who was professor of music therapy at Istanbul University. Then I got pulled into a journey out into the northern areas of Montana, where I was lucky enough to meet the, what was called the Blackfeet. Actually, they're called the Pigani. And it was there that I realized, goodness, there is actually only one song singing. You know, nothing's a secret. Nothing's a secret. Uh, because when they said to me they weren't willing to share with me their relationship with sound and what I called the singing field, which we'll come to later, uh, they said, we have to hear your sound before we're willing to share anything with you. And uh, that was really interesting to me because I thought, okay, wow. You have to hear my sound before you're willing to share anything that really matters to you. And so I said, well, God, I really want to do that. Let's do that. And so we went driving off into the dark night and ended up in this sweet little house. And I was sat at the other end of the room and uh, they were sat at the other end of the room, very serious. And they just said, right, sing. And I thought, okay, this is like calm up for the numbers of times I've said that to human beings. <laughs> and so I just started singing something which we'll sing in a minute and at the end of singing that it was actually a song to the Divine Mother and at the end of singing that uh, they were in my face staring at me as if I was some kind of weird you know scientific specimen and uh, we said we really don't understand why you know that music so I said, what do you mean? I was just singing, it was a Sanskritic chant. I was given it in uh, San Francisco and, I, and that person picked it up in India. And they said, but we don't understand. And they said, because we, it's exactly identical to one of our high pipe ceremonies, the rhythm, the melody line, the, the vibration of it. And so I said, oh my God, and they, they said, oh my God, we, we were just staring at each other like we were, you know, the best of friends. So uh, that really brought home to me, you know, that you can, you can pick up a magic song in San Francisco and travel a few years later to the northern areas of Montana where you meet people 
who is saying to you, we can't share anything with you till we've heard your sound. You share your sound with them. And they go, we are one. We are one. And so it's that understanding of we are one that brought me to this instrument. Because as you can hear, it's like, for me, it's the best friend I ever had. It just is one unchanging note. And so it's this unchanging presence that I would love us to explore this afternoon. So as we're exploring the music and sound of the will, what that is, uh, you know, and how we possibly access it within ourselves, my will, thy will, and that will, uh, <sighs> we're all the time just remembering that it's actually just one, one of us, one of us singing. So how many people were told by some fascist music teacher that you didn't have a voice or you had to get out of the choir? Was there anybody here of that nature? Quite interesting, huh? Okay. So God bless all fascist music teachers. <laughs> we have to forgive, don't we? Which is really another thing that Rory was uh, really implying and everything he was saying so beautifully. So you ready? How Now I see you. Just. Close your eyes a moment and just really uh, feel in your body right now. Where is, where do you feel the will? Where do you feel your will power? It's very often felt in, you know, it's associated with the solar plexus, right? So you may want to just place your hand there and feel it there. And if you actually just try laughing a bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely where the will is, you know. And that's where the will, I mean, it also cries, but it also laughs, right? And that's where it cries and laughs from. And without that, there's no music, right? There's no music at all. Okay, so let's just do that again, just so you really hear that. <laughs> Great! You see? So that's, ha <laughs> ha Now just hear, so turn that laughter into your voice, right? Ha ha! You see? So there's no more little kind of weak little, no, I haven't got a voice, I think I'll do that in 10 years' time. It's like, oh, maybe I'll never, oh, my mother was, oh, 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 oh. none of that, none of that. Okay. Now I see you. Try that. Now I see you. Gorgeous. Now I hear you. Now I feel you. Inside of me. So this is this is this is really a communication with the soul, if you like. The soul and the will is in service to the soul. Okay? So let's just keep the eyes closed if you wish or not. And let's just go through this a few times because it's the repetition. This is what I learned in India with all these mantras and chants. It's the repetition that brings the remembrance of oneself. So just every time you sing this, you're getting closer and closer to a really deep remembrance of yourself, okay? And that again is thanks to the will. Here we go. Now I see you. Now I hear you, now I feel you inside of me, keep going, now I see Now I 
just going to keep going, but I invite you now, this is actually, we're responding to Rory's question, aren't we? We're now creating community deeper and deeper and deeper together. So if you'd like to consider even turning to the person next to you and just seeing them to begin with, or maybe two or three people, yep, and just see them, try not to talk, just see them. Just look at the faces, look at the wisdom in the face. Look at the wisdom in the face, see the journey this face has been through. So we're going fast beneath the social kind of personality face, we're going into really seeing who is here. And the journey that being has taken to come into this tent this afternoon, today, into the Shine Seminars. What a journey it has been, huh? So just find yourself really breathing. Breathing, I mean, well done for a start. God almighty, what courage it has taken to withstand all kinds of things, you know, like misunderstanding, misinterpretation. And then also all the incredible moments we've experienced over the last three, four years even, with new people, new friendships, beautiful. And what these new friendships have brought into our life, unbelievable. And the wisdom they have brought. Who would have known it? Who would have known it? And now let's just see how it feels from this position of awareness to simply sing the song again, just with R. Ah. So you're listening to these notes now. And these notes are actually like uh, they're energy wheels. Every note, every melody line is, is, a, is a place of healing. It's a medicine. Just to go, ah, is to go up the first four chakras. Just try that. La, ha, ha, ha. Then we're coming down a little bit, and then we're going back to that fourth chakra. Ah, ha, ha. Coming into the solar plexus, and then we're coming down a bit more. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Back down to the root, and then absolutely confirming the root. Ah, ha, ha. Cool, that is serious medicine right there. That is serious medicine. So let's sing together now. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. To your partner, if you would. Uh -huh. in the body if there are love it that is the soul going you're right on kid okay that's a really good sign so if the feeling is sadness happiness whatever the feelings are that is the soul singing and it may not be depression anymore it may be longing longing for something we cannot yet name yeah does that make sense to one of us two three four of us yeah so no more antidepressants just how I see you Now I hear you Now I feel you Inside of me Gorgeous Now really strong now 
So feel it from the whole torso, okay? This is really serious. This is really serious, isn't it? Okay. Imagine we're just walking into Downing Street and we're just singing this to Rishi Sunak. <laughs> Imagine. Let's just see how consciously we can do that. <laughs> now I see you. God bless you, sweet little. Now I hear you. Now I feel you. Inside of me. Gorgeous. And just close the eyes for a moment and just think to yourself what you most love about your voice now. What you most love about what you just heard. And if there is a kind of, you know, like laughing it off, that kind of thing, let that go. We've done that. That's over. It's over. You know, the thousands of years that we have been told to shut down these voices is over. So we are now hearing. Who's really in here? Who is this? Who am I? We have three questions in our work. Who am I? Why am I here? And what is mine to express? So that's another thing to be aware of. Who am I? Where does this voice come from? You know? Where does this come from? Who gave me this voice? What do you most love about your voice? Just simply share that. Just maybe one word rather than like the whole narrative. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could just stay here for a few days, but I think we've only got about an hour and a half. So, <laughs> so what you most love, just like a quality or an adjective or an adverb. Connection. Connection. Vibration. Vibration. Strength. Strength. Kindness. Kindness. Resonance, truth. truth. Soul. So again, soul. soul. Love. Love. All right. Now you're talking. <laughs> so love is the is definitely what we're here for, isn't it? Now, what would it be just to change the words? Then just go. How I love you. Same melody line. How I love you. Rishi Sunak. How I love you. Inside. <laughs> That's that. that. <laughs> we can do this. <laughs> that's a very that's a very advanced course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Right. So now, um, what I would love to do is just to share with you the, what did Laurie say? She said the, the 13,000 chakras of love, right? I think she said 13, right? Uh, and so to, we've, we, we've, for many years, have stayed with the seven, partly because I think it was totally selfish, actually. I really needed to understand the seven sounds of love, the seven myself, because I was busy descending, not, you know, ascending. I was trying to learn about being totally human. So we'll go there first, and then we'll just literally lift off. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll come back. We'll come back. <laughs> so um, would you like to see that? Great. Fantastic. We don't have to come back. No, we do. We do. <laughs> I think we've got a little bit of a job to do here. So we do, we do, we do. Okay. So this is where it comes to the, the will, right? Uh, and really strengthening the will. So as we share this, I'm totally 
talking to myself the whole time. We teach what we need to learn. Absolutely clear as that. Okay. So what I've discovered, and I was very lucky to spend 30 years with a martial artist called Masashi Minagawa. <laughs> he came and he just saw me in one of my concerts, just when I came back from I India, and he said, oh, I think uh, I can help you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, God. Thank God, you know. I was so needing help because I was so blissed out, totally ungrounded. So he basically watched what I was doing, rising up and down the scale, right, from the root, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth. And what would happen was I would go on. And he said, right, I bring you down, I bring you down. And so he basically, he came to, to a workshop and I have never seen anything like it. He literally jumped about, it was literally about that high, off the ground, all the way down this room. And it was quite extraordinary. And from then on, we never looked back. We spent 30 years together exploring how we could bring together his meditative movements with the sounds of love. And so that then became a journey of responsibility and deep research, deep research. Because at that time, the voice was still very much about therapy and, you know, oh my God, you know, it's all of that. And that still is there for us, of course, because we feel it. We, we, we do. This, the voice opens up such deep things within us, doesn't it? I mean, it's massive, absolutely massive. So it's courageous to be even in this room at all as we speak. But the interesting thing is that when you are in front of the powers that be, say the kind of the illusion, like when I was in... Um, I was very blessed to sing for His Holiness the Dalai Lama in Northern Ireland when we were kind of doing peace talks between the Catholics and the Protestants. And so there was this peace wall, this massive wall. Can you imagine this? You know, it's just unreal, isn't it? We've been talking about this a lot while we've been here. Uh, so His Holiness comes down, right, with the two leaders, the Catholics and the Protestants, right? And, and I've been told, Chloe, can you just, uh, can you just sing, you know, and uh, you know something give, give give us a bash on your harmonium okay so i said <laughs> so i said okay give us a bash on your harmonium so i said can you just come around the back okay we'll just uh, we'll just check it out what you're going to do so i said well i think he'd like um the heart sutra because that's absolutely central to his practices uh and it goes like this and i started gati gati pada he said that'll be fine chloe that'll be great <laughs> And I said, okay, we're rushing back around there. So we were in a car park in pouring rain, okay, pouring rain, uh, because it had to be literally, rather like today actually, ra you know, it had to be literally equidistant between the Catholics and the Protestants, right? And the, and the security came up to me, they said, Chloe, just to let you know that, that when we open the gates, the children will probably start throwing stones at each other, and they may start throwing stones at you as, as well. Is that okay? <laughs> so, oh, I mean, I had no, kind of, obviously no... It was, <laughs> And I was standing in front of this bank of paramilitary, right? They're already in line, holding back 5,000 people, right? And they're all like, absolutely serious. We are policemen, don't mess with us, right? And so I'm thinking, okay, Tara, great. They're going to open the gates. Let's, I, it's been a great life. I've really loved it. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go out with Tara. It's, it's, what a way to go, you know? So uh, what was so awesome was His Holiness was taking so long, because you know how he is, he just like talks to people and very uh, generous. So he's walking down, it takes a long time, so they had to keep coming up to us. And we were singing, Om Tara Tu Tare Tu Re Soha Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Soha We could just go there, can we? <laughs> so, so every 20 minutes I thought, right, okay, I, I sort of opened my eyes, because you know when you're chanting, you, you tend to close your eyes. And I kept uh, sort of opening my eyes every night again, see if there were any children throwing, no, it's fine. But the policemen, it was really interesting, they started, they, they were really standing like this to begin with, and they were like, <laughs> like that. You know, the, the guns had just gone, what are you doing? And so that was really cool. And then some of them actually started joining in, because... The point is that singing is the most subversive activity. Yes, absolutely. Giles, come on. Does it? Giles. Giles. Absolutely. And the celestial choirs and all of that is just, it's so, 
it's such a beautiful time to be alive, isn't it, with all of this. So uh, basically, His Holiness comes in with the two leaders. They both have beers, right? And he comes in and he's, uh, and we finally, Tara stops, and this is like three quarters of an hour later, maybe longer, maybe it's an hour or something. Uh, and then we're in the pouring rain, totally drenched, but somehow we're dry. I, don't, I can't quite remember how that <laughs> happened, but anyway. Uh, and then he comes in, it's one of those classic moments, you know, where the sky opens, you know, the sun comes out and he comes in with the two leaders. And he has the presence of mind and the, the, the humor, which is another really important part of building willpower, right? To take both their beards <laughs> and bang them against his own head. It was absolutely extraordinary. And it was like, it was one of those moments when you thought, this is not happening, it's happening. You know, it was extraordinary, really extraordinary. And then he looks at the crowd, you know, you've all been singing Tara and they like Tara because Tara is the, the sacred mountain, the sacred hill. I, I say sacred mountain, no, Chloe, it's not, it's not a mountain, Chloe, it's a hill. It's a hill, it's very important there. So I have to realize, I say, oh, the sacred mountain of Ireland, they, no, Chloe, it's not, it's a hill, <laughs> which makes it even more sacred. <laughs> so, um, so it was just extraordinary. He took the, he was doing this, and, and he looks at the crowd and he says, he says, I don't understand why when we have the same religion, people are fighting each other, you know. When, you're, when you have a different religion, he said, I can maybe understand, they might be fighting. But when you're the same religion, I don't understand why there's any fighting at all. And he just starts his roaring with laughter. And 5,000 people are all just like roaring with laughter. You know, it was fierce laughter, yeah, exactly like that. <laughs> Good timing. We've been practicing that for weeks. <laughs> You've got a lovely laugh. You've got a beautiful laugh, beautiful. So there we are, so the seven sounds of love. Okay, so back with Masashi Minagawa and so I just fell in love with the mantric sounds, the, the Sari Gama Padanisa, okay? And they just go on ad infinitum till they disappear. And so, Sa is the root, Sa, Sa. So that is called the sword inside the sheath, standing in emptiness. And you place your right hand around your left thumb, like that. You know, you don't have to do this, by the way. <laughs> I'm, it, it can get quite hypnotic, can't it? Because we're so brought up to have to follow somebody up standing on it. But see how, just experiment, see how it feels. Uh, but you don't have to do this beyond this evening, okay? But you might just want to do it for years. I hope you will. <laughs> Anyway, here we go, sa, and now that is protecting the root chakra, so just really feel that right down in the root, okay? Sa, and then just say, I am, I am, right, and that's sa. Sa. I am. I am that I am. And really, really say that to yourself. I am that I am. Yeah. Lovely. So that's the source of love, okay? That's the source of love. So we don't need to go anywhere else, really, ever again. But then there is just the little matter of the pelvis, okay? So we're going to move up into the second musical interval. I open, just sing that, I open. So the mudra for this is called spreading light. Isn't that gorgeous? So you move from this sword inside the sheath to opening the hands, the pelvis opens, everything opens, I open, okay? And that is Ray. This is where we start visualizing Julie Andrews, but it's okay. We're not going to go there. <laughs> so Gorgeous. Oh, that sounds really, that sounds really nice, doesn't it? Gorgeous. 
Then we move up to I will. Right, this is like you're taking the reins of a horse. I will. Just say I will. I, I will. will. Great. And bring your hands, if you will, right back like you're literally on that horse, the horse of all your passions, all your desires, all your intention. This is intentional love. Intentional love. Yes. And just find yourself saying, yes. Yes. <laughs> and we do this in the street, you know, like if you're on the checkout counter, you know, you're waiting in a queue. Yes. You just you know why you're here, you know. So, and that is ga. Isn't that fantastic? Ga. Ga. Gorgeous. I will. I will. Great. And then coming back to Ray. I open. if you would like to come and demonstrate this with me would you so we can really get it clear um, forgive me I'm Karen isn't it yes Karen if you'd like to stand here Karen is just a gorgeous person who just demonstrates and mo models this work more beautifully than I know so uh, <laughs> and we've only met two times so it's gotta be good <laughs> so here we go and it's just this really is just a journey of intention and building the will and and the three wills. So this is the first will, okay? So let's start with Sa. Sa. I am. Eyes are closed, opening your eyes. I open. Moving to I will, I will. Gorgeous. This is called community building. Yes. Lovely. And that's ga. And again, ga. Fantastic. Back to Ray. So we're coming up now to the, from the will, we're bringing that will into the center of the chest, into the heart center. I give the heart center. This, this mudra is called offering flowers. I give. Lovely. And bring all that giving back to yourself. Nourish yourself with Ga -a -ga. I will and do I will again I will I spent a long time there. One of my students stayed there for seven years. <laughs> so you can go very deep with this work, I tell you. So uh, Rory was talking about the vertical and the horizontal. So the horizontal and the, this is called uh, brightening the whole world. This comes up to the fifth chakra, okay, the throat <coughs> chakra. I share. This is where you get very physical with the people next to you. <laughs> I share. And this mudra, yeah, brightening the whole world. Feel your whole body as light, brightening the whole world. I share. That's gorgeous. And then you bring that. That is pa. Let's just do pa. Pa. And you can even say, I brighten. 
brighten the whole world. I brighten the whole world. Beautiful, you do. Oh my God, it's amazing. I, I wish there was a photo of this. It's absolutely extraordinary. And bring that into the heart center. So you bring your hands, take your elbows back and come into that intuitive heart. Ma, I give. Beautiful. Can you feel that? Can you feel that? It's lovely, isn't it? That offering flowers, coming, bringing those flowers back down into the will. I will. Beautiful. I open. I. Gorgeous. How's that feel? Is that a good feeling? Good. It's quite hypnotic. You may find yourself going. But it's really, they, once you've done it a few times, it doesn't, it's not like so mechanical anymore. But that's lovely. So you can try this with your children, with your friends in the street, total strangers, love it. <laughs> Absolutely, I've never been arrested yet. I, I'm very proud to say, actually, I haven't. I'm really surprised, to be honest with you, but anyway. Um, so that's the first five chakras right there and that's two willpowers we've just got we just traveled through the solar plexus and the heart so my will thy will you see can you feel that so you go from thy will to my will so can you feel the alchemy between those two even to spend an hour doing that would be quite interesting my will so sometimes we're a bit too thy will we're giving too much and we've forgotten to actually give to ourselves. Yeah. Lovely. It's so beautiful. So then what happens is, let's just come back down. So this is pa. Ma. Ga. That was strong. Yes. Let's just do that again from pa, come up to pa. Pa, ma, ga, re, sa. this kind of these these movements shift into songs of your own songs so let's just come up again we're going to come back to the mudra sounds the mantra sounds Sa -re -ga. Something very dramatic happens from pa, right? Brightening the whole world, we move into, this is called all-inclusive love, we move into k 
compassionate love. So we bring the sword. If you had a sword uh, in your hand, which you would do if you worked with us a bit longer, <laughs> you bring it down and you have the sword then in front of you. And it, it, what's lovely is if you're, when you're standing is that you kind of pull you forward, but that's good. It's not a kind of Hindu or a Christian one like this. It's more uh, out like that. So you've got a big space in front of your heart. Very important. So compassionate love, compassion to yourself as well as everybody else. Now what this is good for is the witnessing consciousness, the witnessing mind. So what we're doing internally is connecting our third eye with the tip of that sword and beyond. So we're seeing beyond the problem. We're seeing beyond the situation. We're seeing beyond. We're going somewhere we've never been. Yeah, but we're also protecting ourselves. Yes, we're building this love force within ourselves. And we're also compassionately transmitting that to <coughs> others, okay? So this is a lovely practice to practice uh, for, you know, for, for a long time, for half an hour or something like that, a longer time, just to really feel that. Can you feel how that connects with your pineal gland, the, the third eye, to the edge of the sword, and it really anchors you beyond, beyond, beyond as the, uh, as the Heart Sutra goes. Um, and there's much more to share with you about this, but essentially what we're doing here is building and strengthening the non-judging, self-observing mind. So that's very important for our work together as we're building community. Yep. So that we're really learning to listen beyond the reactive mind. So what we're hitting here is the third will, right? The will that is beyond even what we think ourselves capable of or what our programming or our karmic services this lifetime. We're now directing our attention up into the cosmos. And so what's happening here is we're receiving from the cosmos into the crown. So I, we call that that will. In India, it's Om Tat Sat. You are that. Some of you will know that. Uh, and what that does is, is it kind of effortlessly draws you up to the seventh. That's the sixth. That's Da. And that comes into Ni. And so now the awareness is at the back of the head, behind you, and your sword is pointing into the sky. You may even sometimes just have your head back if that feels good. So you're really connecting with the cosmos and bringing that in, bringing that in. Okay, and that's Ni. This is mystical love. This is the seventh musical interval, Ni. And then we come back to Sa again, universal love. Sa. Sa. So I, I missed out the compassionate love sound is Da. So this is Sa. Ni. Coming down into Da. Yeah, and that's good. That's strong. I, we've got strong witnessing consciousness in this group. Not surprising. Just feel that drawing your, my help cometh even from the Lord who hath made heaven and earth as one reality. And then sa, sa. So this is universal love, sa. Mystical love, ni. That's I surrender. Bring that down, bring it down. Da. Yes, I serve, I serve. Opening into the fifth. Pa. I share. Beautiful. Bringing that down even further into the second will center. I give. Lovely, intuitive love, bringing that down into the first, I will. Beautiful, it's so beautiful to behold. I open, 
I am. And so the coming back to absolutely nothing. So this mudra is called standing in emptiness or standing in nothingness. So just bring, close the eyes and bring your hands right down to the root chakra and just take your awareness on down into the earth. And just with the eyes closed, just internally track this journey through the what we call the octave of consciousness and that then moves up into the next octave and the next and the next and the next. So what we're experiencing here is both a giving and a receiving of love. That's what's going on. So just internally track, moving into the second ray, I open in your own body, moving your awareness on up the central vertical axis, Ga, I will, the solar plexus, moving on up into the heart center, I give. Breathing deeply, receiving, giving. Opening the great spacious sky in the throat center. I share all-inclusive love. Moving your awareness up into the third eye. I serve compassionate love. to the almost the crown just the back of the head the space behind the impersonal consciousness mystical love I surrender up to the crown universal love big breath just be aware of this extraordinary energy that is heaven, earth, one love, one humanity. And receiving from the cosmos, bringing and slowly coming down. Sani, <coughs> da.
Other times I forget, I simply forget the one who forgives sweet when I hear. I love you and this is really good in the street it goes right up to the top how I love you so starting at the top <laughs> Street. <laughs> 
<laughs> How are we doing for time? There's so much to do. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Okay. So, anybody would like to thank you so much, Karen. <laughs> So, uh, okay, so we've got 10 minutes. Um, any questions? Anybody want to ask any questions? Or I'd love to tell you a little bit about what we're doing this autumn. Can you tell you the five things of love again? The, the five sounds of love? The 49,000 sounds of love? The, um, so, the yes. This is, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you can find this in this book. <laughs> <laughs> Say, oh, yes, yes, yes. So there is a book in here. It's got absolutely everything in it. But I will happily, I, I'll work out how to do this with Eli, just send you the PDF of the map. So it's a, it's a body centered singing map. And all you have to do is look at that map. It's got everything on there. If, if I die tomorrow, I'd be very glad I made that piece, one piece of paper. Because it says everything on it that I have to say this lifetime. That's it. So, um, so there's that. Yes, yeah, so... Source of love, sexual creative love, intentional love, devotional love, all-inclusive love. Do you have a question there? No, you're okay. All-inclusive love, compassionate love, mystical love, cosmic love, universal love. And then you just bring that down every day you know, to wherever it is needed. It's so interesting, isn't it, that something that is so subversive is, is so disorienting for anyone in uniform. <laughs> it's lovely, actually, isn't it? Because basically we're all wired to sing and to sound. And it's not even singing, is it? It's really soul expression. So it's really understanding. And this is what we didn't get taught at school. You know, we were given a piece of paper, right? And if you, you know, it had some music on it, and if you could, if it was in your vocal range, great. You know, and you were in the choir or whatever thing. You know, and if not, you were out. Something like 71% of children are leaving school, literally, probably more by now, I bet, without that sense of having a voice. It's very, very challenging time. Uh, but the beautiful thing of working with John Stuart Reed and quantum science is it just is demonstrating, of course, how this sound we have just made this afternoon has just traveled several hundred miles in all directions, you know. So we don't have to do anything but just literally send this love out. Uh, and the quantum scientists can measure it and, until the cows come home. And that's really great for the kind of doubting for people that really want to know that it's a really substantial medicine, particularly if it's going to replace, you know, the pharmaceuticals. Um, so, so, you know, all of that is possible as well, of course. But um, the point is, is that it's just simply, it, we, we were born with this. We were born with this. And it's not like, have you got a voice? You know, this beautiful woman the other day, I was, uh, I asked, I was just talking with her and I said, uh, she was doing a one-to-one. -one. I said, what do you most love about your voice? And prior to that question, uh, she started out, she had this gorgeous voice, like really, you know, she was from, uh, you know, the West Coast and she was helping people to die consciously. And I went, my God, what an amazing job, how incredible. And she said, yeah, you know, and I really love my voice. And she obviously was really incredible. As soon as I asked her, how do you feel about your voice? Just that singular question. Her voice went from, well, I'm a really professional, very confident human being to, well, I don't really like it because my husband doesn't like it. He's, 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 I really, it's, yeah, I really, it's probably why I was that. And I said, um, do you notice what happened? <laughs> and then she came back down to this extraordinarily beautiful sp speaking voice. So what I, what she taught me to say was, are you aware you're speaking on F sharp? And that was so disorienting to her kind of egoic mind that she, I played it on the, on the harmonium and she heard it. As soon as she heard it, because she could hear it in her speaking, 
And because her speaking was so soul-filled, she was already so sincerely at home in her speaking voice, she was able to join it up with everything else. And so then the soul was able to really expand. And that really taught me something very special, you know. So it's, if you literally were to do this single thing every day, so you wake up and you just go, how do I feel? How do I feel? And then you just sound that feeling, or that, whatever that is, you know. Could be anything. It could be absolutely, yeah, yeah, it could be. Could be, yeah. Could be just like, yeah. That's right. It could be anything at all. And it, it, yeah. And you take that sound, right? So, for example, people that tell me that how, when I say, how do you feel? And they say, I feel depressed. So you say, well, what does that sound like? Well, I possibly couldn't tell you because I'm a depressed person. So I'm, you know, I, you know, that's not what I do. I'm not a musician. I'm here to prove I haven't got a voice. So, um, you know. so I go, well, you know, well, just, you know, might as well. I, you have actually paid me to have the session. So why not, you know, just, um, what does it sound like? So very often it's, it's going to be a minor third. Oh, you know, and, I, and then I go, oh, that was gorgeous. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm depressed. I'm really depressed. And the story goes on. Well, you, just, you might as well just keep going because you did actually, do you remember you paid me for this session? Right, okay, go on, go on. Okay, so. Oh, you know, and they're like, oh, wow, that was great. And they get one. Well, no, it's not. I'm just really not sound. Not, not I'm not sounding happy at all. I said, "We'll just keep going." Ah, you know, and it's great. I mean, I'm absolutely loving it. Absolutely loving it, because that is the Aeolian mode. You know, and so once you get into the musicality of whatever the state is, it is music. Everything is music, as Rumi says. We have fallen into the place where everything is music. We know that. Don't worry about saving these songs. And if one of our instruments breaks, it doesn't matter. We have fallen into the place where everything is music. Yeah. Did you actually tell? Yes, we did that. Yeah, I'm just checking something we did about how you feel about your voice. Yeah. How do you, can you imagine taking this away? And, would you consider taking this away now and just, this is now called pure attachment to the practice. <laughs> would you consider taking this away and just sharing it with one other person? Yes. Fantastic. That's really great. And really enjoy it for yourself. Should we just do it one more time to make sure you got it? Yeah? Okay. I'd like you just to turn to the person next to you and so demonstrate to them what you now know, okay? Yes, yeah, stand up. I'm so sorry, we never stood up. <laughs> Here we go. Are you ready? Have a good shake. Just shake your hands a bit. Shake your hands. Shake your shoulders. Oh. Shake your body. Shake your, shake your voice. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic. Beautiful. Here we go. Are you ready? So would you like to do it with the um, statements or with, should we do it with the statements? I am, I open and all of that. Yeah. Rather than sorry, Yeah. Yeah. Or we can do both. We can do both. We'll do both. So which one should we start with? I am? Yeah. So let's start with the I am. So, so the hands, the eyes are closed. I am and the feet together, take your awareness a thousand miles down. Beautiful. Oh, this is a place to be for a few months. Well, minutes. And then moving into I open. Can you remember? The hands open, the eyes open, the stance opens. I open. Beautiful. The eyes are open. You're opening, spreading light. I will. I will. Feel that will. Bring your elbows right back like you're really on a horse and it's serious. That horse is going to take off if you're not careful. Yeah. 
really go. I will, and again, I will. I will. Yes, fabulous. I give, I give. Beautiful, oh my God. This is community. I share, I share. I serve, bringing the sword together in front of you. I serve. Beautiful. I surrender. Just bring the sword, let it be pulled up into the cosmos. I surrender. Yeah. And then I am again opening into the cosmos. I. close to you a massive hug. This is the field. Yeah. This is the field. Thank you so much, everyone, for the quality of your listening. Yeah.